radio TV phono nut here and what we have today is a Newcomb model RT1230V phonograph this was the type that was used in schools and also by square dance callers, dance instructors that sort of thing and I figure and for school use this was probably used in music departments and physical education classes this model here has a 12 inch speaker in the lid which I don't have here in the shop right now and we have controls for tempo, phono volume, treble bass microphone volume and microphone tone there's our microphone input jack as well as a jack for two speakers now this is a mono unit but it still has a jack for two speakers and we have our pause control off, amplifier on, so you can just use it for a PA amplifier and leave the turntable motor off, play and pause. And then we have jacks for monitoring music, output to tape or monitor all, uh, auxiliary input, and RMV, which stands for remote volume control. And the cartridge is your standard 89T plug-in cartridge that's worn out. Well, the LP side is. The 78 side's still good, so I'll use that in some of my 78-only players. Uh, this works, but it needs the the usual the usual repair done to it. The drive mechanism can stand to, to be cleaned and lubricated, and the amplifier probably has some capacitors that are questionable and all the pots of course need to be cleaned. Now, I've already looked inside and this is from 1981 and the capacitors that I see are from what I can see are a mix of USA made Mallory's and Japanese made Panasonic's. Now the purple Panasonic ones they have to go. Those are bad about peeing all over everything and I've even seen them dead short before, so those will definitely have to go, and we'll test the uh, Mallory capacitors, and if they're still within spec, we may just leave them alone. Alright, uh, here's the underside. As you can see, it's there's a pretty good bit to this. This is your microphone preamp board. This is your main amplifier board. This is all your input jacks. This is your switches and pause control power transformer. This is our good General Industries AC drive motor that uses an eddy current type speed control. This magnet that when you turn the speed control knob you can see a magnet runs in contact with a spinning disc and that's what slows the uh, slows down or speeds up the motor now before we pull the knobs off, I'm going to take note of which color goes on which shaft. Of course, I don't guess it really matters, but it would be nice to put them back on the way they were when I got it. And as far as AV stuff goes, uh, Newcomb, in my opinion, was top-notch up until the end. I don't know exactly when they went out of business, but I think it was sometime in the early 80s. And like I said, this one's from 81. The only thing I don't like about the later ones is they went to this plastic tone arm clip instead of using the old metal clip. Most of the ones I find with a plastic clip are broken from old age and plastic getting brittle and people pulling the uh, retainer clip back too far to release the tone arm. You just have to move it back just enough to release the arm. You don't have to go yanking on it but still they should have stuck with the uh, old style metal tone arm lock okay platter removed necessary knobs removed and all nuts removed need to remove these two screws here and then the amplifier should drop down everything looks pretty clean under here but of course this will need to be taken apart and thoroughly cleaned and re-lubricated Here's the amplifier board exposed, and that purple Matt Schuster cap will definitely need to go. 
that's the speaker coupling capacitor and the rest of these we'll, we'll test them and see how they are and determine what needs to be done based on our findings here's the original capacitor and axle lead and even though it still checks good I'm replacing it anyway due to the history these tend to have I will throw it in my resurrection box for maybe fixing junk that really is not worth a new part but anyway axle lead capacitors are starting to become extinct you can still get them but they're getting harder by the day to get and they're a lot more expensive than radial lead caps so what we had to do, we had to install our radial lead capacitor like this bend one lead of the capacitor down and install it to the circuit board and then we attached a piece of solid hookup wire to the other lead, put heat shrink tubing over the whole thing, bent it around and soldered it to the uh, other terminal here. And as far as any of these other capacitors, the newer components we have will be physically smaller than any of these are and we should be able to bend the leads back and, and mount them mount the parts standing up and there should still be enough clearance to where we can mount the amplifier back to the chassis here but this thousand microfarad capacitor it would not have been possible to stand it up and mount it back in the chassis so that's the way we did it the way we did okay I went over the remainder of these capacitors and they all check just as good today as they did 40 years ago so we're going to leave them in place. Now all we need to do now is spray the pots with some of my control cleaner and work them back and forth a bunch of times and then we can put the amplifier back in the cabinet and work on the drive mechanism and then we'll have a decent little record player. Alright, that should take care of the electronic end of it. Now I'm going to start on the mechanics and I guess first thing we'll do is pop off this E-clip, pull the spindle out, clean the spindle and the bushing and re-lubricate it with a uh, white lithium grease with a couple of drops of zoom spout oil mixed in and that ought to take care of the spindle get it turning smoothly okay we have this all greased up and lubed up and cleaned up and ready to be put back in the back in place okay I've taken the drive mechanism apart cleaned it up and lubricated it it's all good to go. I didn't show it because you've only seen me do it 10 million times on here. No need and all the repetition. The only thing different about this one and the usual drive mechanisms is this one has the pitch control. So we need an Allen wrench to remove this wheel. And then once you get that off, you just remove the nuts that hold this whole assembly onto the motor. And then it's pretty self-explanatory getting it apart. Just don't lose any of the washers or spacers or anything like that. And we clean the motor out and re-oiled it with zoom spout. And it ought to be good to go for another, oh, 40 years. Although technically about once a year you ought to open it up and put a few drops of oil on the bottom bushing and a few drops on the top bushing. And as long as you keep these shaded pole motors oiled, they'll usually run from now on. All right, there we go. It's working. Here's a 16 RPM record. I'm willing to cooperate. We help you get the top. Experience difficulty, or if for any reason you are not satisfied, please feel free to write to your library and give details. We have the division. 
And here's an 8 RPM record, just for the heck of it. Let's put it on here and see if we can use the pitch control to slow it down enough to satisfactorily play this record. Yeah, if you're real careful with the pitch control, you can get it down slow enough. reform or the unity and diversity of its spiritual message. The Bible was written in a historical setting and culture very different from our own. It was written by men who had something from God to say to their times, but who had no idea that they were writing scripture to be read two or three thousand years later. So yeah, this will play everything from... 8 RPM up, up to more than 78 RPM, probably up to 80 RPM or more. Whether for cultural enrichment or the deepening of simplified, and here's our treble. Easily usable form of the big books. They don't give you very wide tone control range on here, but there is evidence some tone control range. Question of what is meant by its being the inspired word of God. Base. The second chapter deals with a geographical social and religious setting within which the Bible emerged. The next two canvas the stages of development and the literary types in the Old and New Testaments for the brief look at the main theme. That's our microphone. It's, you need chapter, to keep that set to zero when you don't have a mic plugged into it because it's God, man, and very Jesus sensitive and with no input plugged in it will buzz like crazy and probably pick up some interference God, too. Okay, a little bit of add-on to this video. I replaced the cartridge in this record player. I went from a, a static 89T plug-in to a Fansteel P226, which is a Barco knockoff. It's a true stereo cartridge wired for mono that will truly play stereo and mono records, and it tracks lighter than the original 89T and won't gouge your records as bad. And the reason I changed it is because the 89Ts are getting scarce and expensive and because the 89T was skipping on a lot of bass intensive records, which this newer cartridge won't do, or won't be as likely to do. This trade-off is you lose a little bit of volume because this cartridge has lower output but it still gets plenty loud enough for the average home user and I think when you consider you get better fidelity less record wear and a cartridge is easier to maintain as in you can replace the needle for under ten bucks then I think we can live with a little bit lower volume level. and there's the cartridge now one thing I need to caution you about, and I found that out with this one, is these cartridges from the Voice of Music website come in two varieties, the P228 with the shorter needle that gives about 0.8 volts output, and the P226 with the longer needle that gives about 0.5 volts output. Well, I ordered the version with the shorter needle, and for some reason, that needle was not happy in this tone arm and it was gouging records, particularly styrene 45s. I mean, it was cutting them up on the first pass. And I fought with it and played with it and did everything I knew to do and nothing was working. So finally I said, I'm going to try the, the longer needle and see what that does. Slapped in a longer needle and it plays fine, no record damage that I can detect. 
I don't think there's anything wrong with the shorter needle because I had two or three of those on hand. I tried them all. They all did the same thing. I just think for some reason that needle just is not happy in this particular tone arm. So I went with the longer needle, a Fansteel 864-DS73, and that took care of the problem. <laughs> But yeah, it works just fine. Like I said, the volume level is a little lower, but it still gets plenty loud enough. Get that off of there before I get a copyright strike. You were so right about everything. If only I would have listened to those words. I love you. Here's a 16 RPM record. ...which was finished in a turtle back. The deck was deserted, and he crawled to the extreme end of it near the flagpole. There he died.